Julia Morgan, the client's architect. Julia Morgan was born in San Francisco in 1887. Unlike most girls at the time, Julia opted to attend college after she graduated high school, and with the support of her family, she went to study at the University of California at Berkeley. She graduated with an engineering degree in 1894. Julia, advised by Bernard Maybeck, then headed to Paris to study architecture at the world-renowned École des Beaux-Arts, where after applying several times, she was admitted and became the first woman to be enrolled at the school. Upon graduating in 1904, Miss Morgan moved back to the Bay Area and within just a few months opened her own office. After the 1906 earthquake that flattened most of San Francisco, architecture firms were in high demand and Miss Morgan's office was no exception, especially after word spread that one of her earlier buildings, the Mills College Bell Tower, built before the earthquake, had remained intact. Over the next few years, Julia built several buildings all around the Bay Area, including private residences, churches, and recreation facilities. She also formed important ties with organizations and individuals that would become lifelong clients, such as William Hearst. He commissioned Morgan for several projects, including the Los Angeles Examiner and her most famous building, the Hearst Castle in San Cine in California. The immense complex has several houses and gardens, all in different architectural styles, yet executed to perfection. The McCormick Residence. Located in Berkeley, California, the McCormick Residence was designed by Morgan in 1911 for Berkeley professor F.I. McCormick. It's an arts and crafts styled three-story residence of modest exterior and shingle design, but with detailed and carefully designed interiors. The entrance has a significant recess from the street to give its residents more privacy, yet the interior does not allow for hiding. The living room, with its exposed redwood beams and furnished by dark wood, is pleasantly illuminated by the bay window that faces the street and accommodates an unusual double seat inside of it. The dining room's main feature is a wood-cased fireplace. The Young Women's Christian Association in Oakland. One of the organizations that favored Julia as their go-to architect was the Young Women's Christian Association, known as YWCA, which commissioned her to build facilities in several cities around the Bay Area and all over California. This includes the Chinatown YWCA in San Francisco, the Riverside YWCA in Riverside, and the Honolulu YWCA, as well as others in Arizona and Utah. One of the most notable of these buildings is the YWCA in Oakland, California, Julia Morgan's first of many buildings built for this institution. Located at 1515 Webster Street, the building remains one of downtown Oakland's Beaux-Arts treasures. Julia played with materials, rhythm, and scale of windows to create a base, a middle, and a top of the building. Every single window was ornamented with a detailed terracotta design of fruits and flowers, which allude to California's colorful produce. While the windows remain mostly rectangular, the front facade windows were arched right above the entrance, while the remaining on the next floor created a row of windows that topped the middle section of the building. On the last floor, the main space is recessed to give room for a balcony that surrounds the whole floor and works not only as an exterior space, but also as the top tier of the building. The highlight of the building is the light-filled interior courtyard that consists of rows of arches held by square columns that become smaller on the second floor. The frieze between the first and second floor is ornamented with biblical quotes like, the firmament showeth his handiwork, meant to inspire the women who use the facility. This technique was also used in the chapel at Asilomar. The Oakland's YWCA Italian Renaissance Revival style can be clearly appreciated on the outside, but it is the interior spaces where we can appreciate the subtle masterpiece that is this building. Chapel of the Chimes. Completed in 1928, the Chapel of the Chimes in Oakland is one of four funerary structures Julia designed in her career. She was hired to create a building that would serve as an addition to the existing mausoleum, which was rapidly filling up. She chose to create a structure with a blend of Romanesque and Gothic styles, 
thinking of sobriety and elegance. The exterior is somber and modest, while the interior is intrinsically detailed and beautifully ornamented. Despite the sand-colored stone on the exterior, the interior is bathed in off-white and deep, rich color combinations displayed in the atriums, gardens, small chapels, and gothic hallways spanning from one chapel to another. She created a total of 79 chapels, courts, and cloisters in this portion of the complex, each and every one evoking a sense of timeless beauty meant to be soulless for those in mourning. The main chapel, which is the one originally named Chapel of the Chimes, consists of a series of concrete Gothic arches that span a wood beam ceiling, creating a beautiful contrast between the off-white colored arches and the dark colored wood. Trying to avoid the dark and dreary typical funeral home, Morgan created a series of spaces filled with light with yellow, blue, and orange stained glass windows designed by her trusted craftsman, Marion Simpson. The main chapel was considered such a grand piece of work, they renamed the entire complex the Chapel of the Chimes. These three buildings are an example of the scope of work and eclecticism of Julia Morgan's style, as she claimed there was never a project too big or too small for her. Known for her focus in pleasing her clients in every aspect of design, Julia Morgan accumulated over 700 projects built in her 50-year-old career, which ended with her retirement months after her most important client, William Hurst, died in 1951. Today, Julia Morgan's buildings remain all over the Bay Area and the West Coast, and just as she predicted, her buildings are speaking for her long after she is gone.